have had instances where my gate checked bag was somehow lost. I don't even, if it's on the same plane as you, how does it get lost? be overwhelming. You're not entirely sure what you need to bring or what you're going to need when you get to where you're going. It can just be a lot to think about. So I'm going to take you through my steps that I go through in order to get started packing. So the first thing I do is I correlate how many days my trip is versus how many outfits I'm going to need. So if I'm going on a seven day trip, I'm going to need seven outfits. So for clothes, I start with clothes. You're going to want to pick out about three bottoms, four if you can fit it, but three bottoms and about four or five tops. Now, when I travel, I normally make sure that all of my tops are thin in fabric, and then I do bring layers in case it gets cold or rainy or whatever, but we'll get to that later. So start with the basics, tops, bottoms. I start with my bottoms because these are usually the thickest in fabrics, and then if I'm bringing any like coats or whatever, I'll pack that at the bottom as well. So make sure that you roll your clothes. I know Marie Kondo says to do the kimono, kunami, you know, method, but I'm telling you, I have traveled many a day and rolling is the way to go if you wanna fit as many items of clothing in your suitcase as possible. Then what I normally do is I'll bring three pairs of shoes. So one pair of shoes that I can dress up or dress down a pair of tennis shoes for travel days and if you're going hiking or whatever. Now these shoes you'll wear to the airport, so that'll save you space in your suitcase. And then usually a pair of boots in case it rains or in case you are in snow or whatever the case, bring some boots because you might need them. All right, so clothes are done. Next is toiletries and makeup. This is always the most difficult one for everybody because there's so many rules when it comes to TSA. And on top of it, most of the girls want to bring all their makeup and hair accessories and stuff like that. We've got the curling irons, the hair straighteners, the hair dryers. We've got the shampoos, conditioners, the list goes on. But start with the necessities. So shampoo, conditioner. Get yourself a little 3.4 ounce bottle Fill that up with your favorite shampoo, your favorite conditioner, or just use, you know, the little containers from the hotels and bring those with you. So what I like to do, if I don't feel like bringing my little silicone go gear, because sometimes those can take up a little bit more space than I like, I'll just take, you know, the shampoos and conditioners from the hotels and bring them home and every time I go on a trip, I'll just use those. The thing is, I have a lot of hair. so. I usually, you know, I'll just, I'll sacrifice the space for it. So other necessities include your razor, your toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, medication, and whatever else you deem necessary for your hygiene routine. The next thing I do after everything is laid out is I separate my liquids from the solids. Make sure that any makeup that you're wanting to bring, if it's liquid, it needs to go in your liquids bag. Otherwise, they will stop you at TSA and they will make you throw it away if you don't have space in your makeup bag or in your toiletry bag. So for makeup, my rule of thumb is to try to go without as much as possible. I know it's hard because when you're on a trip, you wanna take good pictures, you wanna look presentable, you know, you wanna have something, you know, on there. What I do is instead of my you know, big, here I'll show you. Instead of bringing these things, I'll just bring a little BB cream and that's, it'll take me a long way. So that saves up a lot of space. And then I try to use powders. So I don't, you know, if I wanna bring more makeup, I don't have to put it all in my toiletry bag. So now we have all of our toiletries. Now we're gonna move on to our wants. This includes makeup, hair accessories, jewelry, etc. For hair, Electronics, I don't know what they're called. Most hotels have a hair dryer, so you don't need to bring one with you. What I try to do is the day before a travel day, I'll do my hair and it'll last about two or three days. Bring your dry shampoo. And then for the remainder of the trip, bring one hair accessory that you can style your hair with. 
So what I do is I'll bring a styler and this allows me to curl my hair and straighten it. This is the GHD Styler. It's amazing, I love it. It's not sponsored, but this is the way to go. So for accessories like jewelry, keep it simple. I usually just wear very dainty jewelry, but I know some people like to go big with the earrings and the bracelets and all that. Try to keep it as basic as possible to save yourself space. Step three is going to be your personal item. Now, most airlines allow you to bring one carry-on and one personal item with you. This personal item can be as big as you want as long as it fits in front of the seat in front of you. So most flight attendants and gate agents, that's what they're looking for when they are looking at your personal item. When I bring a personal item, I will bring this guy. And the reason being because I like to take a lot of valuables with me on my trips. So why always pack your valuables in your personal item bag? Well, let me tell you. On a travel day, there are many factors that can make you late for your flight. Whether it be bad traffic, whether you're in the long line for Starbucks that are usually like two hours long. Maybe you got held up at TSA and they pulled you aside for random questioning. Maybe you got lost in the parking lot or somebody missed the, you know, where they were supposed to drop you off. Whatever it was, now you're late for your flight. And you get up to the gate and the gate agent's like, I'm sorry, ma'am, um, we're gonna need to check your bag. And you're like, what, why? And she's like, the overhead bin space is completely full, so we're gonna need you to check it. And you're all, but I have important stuff in there. And she's all, I am sorry, I don't know what to tell you, um, but we're gonna be taxiing in about two minutes. So now you've got two minutes to transfer what is in your personal bag to your carry-on bag and vice versa, and you have to figure it out, and they're closing the door, and you're freaking out. Just take it from me. Keep all your valuables with you at all times. Another reason you wanna pack your valuables and keep them with you at all costs, have you ever just pulled up to your gate and you're just finally glad that you landed and you look down and you see the guys unloading the plane and they're taking all the bags out and it looks something like this? Keep your stuff with you at all times. And if you're going to pack other stuff in your carry-on bag, like valuable things, make sure that you bubble wrap them and just keep in the back of your mind that this bag, I, it could be separated from me. So I just need to be prepared for that. Another thing I do for my personal bag is I will carry or I'll put like a backpack inside of that bag so that when I get to my destination, I can just take it out and I can travel with that. Or I'll put a purse in there for, you know, if I have a nice occasion to go to. So that's usually the first thing I put. I just put it at the bottom. And then I pack all my stuff, like my electronics and my important documents. So my laptop, an iPad or tablet, um, my camera gear, my chargers for my phone, my laptop or iPad, my camera, and any power adapters. One of my favorite power adapters is this Anchor power adapter. I know it looks huge, but it has about four or five charges in it. So when you're traveling, that is like a lifesaver, especially if your phone dies fast, um, which at the time mine was doing. Um, and it, it's honestly, it's not that bulky. I mean, I like it a lot and I it fits everywhere. It's very slim. So there are different sizes, but this is the one I chose because it has the most battery life. Then I've got my headphones, my extra batteries for phone and camera. My books, uh, or a book, a journal, and a sweater. I'll usually put socks if I have the space. My chapstick, of course. A sleep mask, neck pillow for longer flights. And some earplugs. pretty much it. 
and you know you can pack you know whatever it is that you want to pack <laughs> you don't have to pack everything that I pack but I'm just showing you how I pack and how I plan ahead for packing because it really does help you when you take that extra time to think about what could happen on that day of travel um, and I have had instances where my gate checked bag was somehow lost I don't even if it's on the same plane as you how does it get lost Sometimes it does and it doesn't make any sense. But yeah, so that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions about travel. I can't wait to talk about all my different travels and all of the things that I have experienced. Be on the lookout for more travel videos. I'm planning some really great trips coming up and subscribe if you thought this was helpful. The mailman is here. I'm pretty sure he thinks I'm robbing the house. These were you, what am I trying to say here? I dropped the camera. My room was so clean, and now I have to clean it up. I always end up with extra space. So I'm gonna go grab some more clothes. <laughs>